As a member of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, you participated in an April 2008 hearing at which you were one of the only voices in the room speaking in defense of abstinence education. You've been a longtime advocate for abstinence education, and in 2006 you had your staff conduct a report entitled Abstinence and Its Critics, which discredits many claims purveyed by those who oppose abstinence education. What did you think of this hearing? Well, I personally feel I should have probably abstained from the hearing. Uh, that uh, <laughs> okay. it was um, it was arguably, although I've seen uh, Chairman Waxman has done some pretty biased hearings, oh, yes. but this was arguably the most biased hearing we've been. First off, from the topic, how has absence education failed? Rather than so you knew you were going to be fighting. How from the how get -go. hard is it to get kids to abstain from sex? regardless what program you give them, would have been a fair title. Uh, <laughs> the failures of both condom distribution and abstinence education uh, to prevent teen pregnancy would have been an interesting title mm -hmm. because guess what? Nothing works very well. But their argument was based on a uh, report that the Democrats did and asked for that, would ha that said that certain abstinence programs hadn't been reaching the goals that we wanted. Now, the General Accounting Office, GAO, mm -hmm. was very careful. They said some of these programs need to be improved, but they didn't make the claims that the Democrats' hearing subject or the chairman made or the media reprinted. Nothing in the GAO report said that absence education failed or was counterproductive. However, they did have a number of uh, witnesses that suggested that absence education increased teen sexual activity increased teen pregnancy, even though there wasn't any evidence of that. And probably the, the uh, most amazing question came from Congresswoman Virginia Fox from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And she said, if the studies show that absence education reduces teen pregnancy, would you still a favor or oppose uh, absence education? And all but one of the Democratic witnesses, six of them, mm -hmm. said, they would oppose absence education even if data showed that it worked, hmm. which showed this wasn't a hearing about no. the effectiveness of no. absence education. It was objecting to teaching morality. One of the members mm -hmm. of, of Congress who uh, uh, said uh, to them, um, isn't this futile? And that one of their big pitches of the day is we should teach abstinence uh, plus. In other words, um, since the kids aren't going to uh, abstain anyway, mm -hmm. we should have abstinence plus, which would be somewhat like, uh, I don't know, virginity plus. It's hard, it's hard to sort through precisely what abstinence plus is, especially if you mention the word condom eight times for every time you mention the word abstain. It's hard to argue that, mm. which is what abstinence plus programs do. Okay. Uh, then they argued, well, you shouldn't have been comparing words. Well, that was the whole point. Uh, you shouldn't have been word counting, but that's what you said is, is that it was abstinence plus, but it's not abstinence with a little bit of, and if you don't, it's a don't do it, but here's, here's what to do uh, since you're not going to listen to me anyway. I asked one of, the members of, okay. one of the members of Congress, so do you favor a no smoking right. plus? In other words, smoking's bad, but since we know you're going to smoke anyway, here's the advantages of low tar cigarettes, here's medium tar cigarettes. Mm -hmm. If you smoke it a certain way, if you only smoke half the cigarette, and you spend eight times as much money on ex giving them explanations of how you can have safe smoking quotes. Mm -hmm. it, and, and you know what he said? What did he say? That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, okay. it's a good point. It happens to be at the core of the subject. I was particularly offended when two young people that were added to the supposed mm -hmm. scientist panel. Uh, and how young they, were these people, uh, these witnesses, so to speak? I thought initially they were... Uh, 18 to 22, but I think they were more in their late 20s. Um, okay. And they said one had AIDS, and he said if it hadn't been for an absence program that didn't give him instruction on how to put the condom on correctly, he wouldn't have gotten AIDS. In other words, it's everybody's fault but his. And Sounds you know, like one it. of the members said, "Are you saying in the absence program they didn't tell you that the only way not to get AIDS is not to have same. sex uh, with a partner you don't know their background?" Mm -hmm. And uh, he didn't answer that. The other thing was, <laughs> I'm not absence surprised. programs are only recently funded about the, by the federal government. None of the kids who were objecting to the absence programs were objecting to an absence program that we were debating. It was before So the they question is, is why did the, the chairman okay. of the committee have kids on a scientist panel who didn't have any information about the programs we were debating, and then were so absurd that mm -hmm. they blamed absence programs, which they didn't have any experience in, 
for their problems. I mean, it just, this type, when, when people say, how is Washington different than Indiana? Here's, a, here's an example. How is it different to have a conservative in control of Congress as opposed to a liberal? Mm -hmm. When I was chairman of the committee, of which Waxman was part of, the chairman was part of my subcommittee, okay. we did on absence programs and how to make them work better and how to make any kind of program Not work better. Not to prove better. that they failed. And his program so is how we can repeal absence mm -hmm. programs. What a difference. Uh, to view the report, please visit